Hi guys, welcome back after a bit of a break. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to solve a simple problem on a Mitsubishi L200 starter motor. Um, problem is the pinion. The pinions often go on them and they are easily replaceable. And once replaced, the starter will work away again. So let's move on and get to the video. Now guys, this is the starter I'm going to show you today. Now this is not a genuine Mitsubishi, but it's exactly replacement, it's OEM replacement. So every board, everything about it is exactly the same as a genuine. Um, they fit Mitsubishi L200 and some Pajeros as well. The very common problem with them starters is the pinion. Now to how to diagnose the problem? Well, most of the time what will happen when you're trying to start your vehicle, when you turn the ignition switch is, you'll hear the starter working but it will sound like it engages and disengages of the flywheel but and often enough people think this is a solenoid problem but it's not if it sounds like it engages and disengages it's more than likely this baby there now you'll see how to take off a solenoid as well so if you're changing a solenoid on the one of them starters you can pay attention as well and you'll see exactly how to do the job which is changing the solenoid but we are going to focus on the pinion. Now first of all how to recognize the starter is if you look here in the front you have the Mitsubishi symbol there and there's some numbers on them as well. Now um, on genuine starters what you'll have here on the side you'll have the sticker with a Mitsubishi mark and it'll say something like M2T or M1T which is basically the ser series of the starter but it's going to be a Mitsubishi starter looking just like this one. Now as always, we are going to start with testing the starter, simply just supplying the power onto the main connection here and onto the small push on there, which the small one is basically the signal from the ignition switch and the big one is the direct connection to the battery. Now if you have a, a solenoid problem, what will happen? It will just click doing that test, but we know it's the pinion problem, we know it's a Bendix problem. Just put the power into the main connection here and into the small one. We can hear that the starter is working away and just to show you guys we're going going to do it again and as you can see the pinion comes out and spins away it, do, it doesn't actually disengage it's just the fact that this pinion is slipping that's where the problem arises from now guys we're going to start off with taking this connection of the solenoid and then taking off them two Phillips screws now guys we have our connection disconnected from the solenoid and we have our two bolts taken off now we can shove the solenoid out as you see inside you have a spring and inside here there's a plunger now there's a little plastic tip here and if you look inside the forks they actually there's a little split there so the plunger can go in and shove down and that that catches the actual plunger now if you're just changing the solenoid on your starter because you check the starter and it only clicks but the motor is running it means it's the solenoid problem and if you're changing that if you change the starter it's all what you have to do the only thing to remember is when you're fitting the solenoid back onto it that when you put the plunger in make sure to put it in side and down so once it's in it can actually move the pinion in and out and now you can fit the solenoid onto it now when we have this done We'll take out them two main screws and two little ones. Now, in this case, they are tens, they are eights. But in your in your case, if you have a genuine starter, there the two little ones are going to be Phillipses, more than likely. Now, guys, we have our two throughout bolts removed. We have our two little ones removed as well. What we do now is we give a cap, a little tap. Cap comes off. Now, guys. If you want to check the brushes, the best way is to just simply shove out the body of the actual armature. And if you have a good look here, 
you can see the brushes are actually coming out of the brush box a bit now don't expect them to be all the way through like these ones are actually brand spanking new this is how much brushes if you see that much or even a bit less it's good enough it will work away now this is our armature we can remove it and see the commutator here what you might to do what you might to do if, if if you want get yourself a needle or a filed down hacksaw blade and just give them little channels here a clean and general clean of the of the, of the commutator itself now inside here inside our drive end what we have we have a rubber grommet here which we can simply pull out most of the time grommet comes off there's a steel plate here keep this and now we remove the plate that holds the gears now the plate comes off and we have a rubber band here and with three gears now pull out all them three gears make sure you don't lose them don't put them any any into any dirt or anything like that keep them as clean as possible now with our gears removed now guys inside where the bushing is there's a little ball bearing you can't see it because I lost mine but it is there anyway so be careful when you're taking it apart not to lose this this little ball because it's very very important it actually holds up the the armature so make sure you have it there now when we have this all this done what we do just turn it upside down and just pull the drive end out here we have forks and we have our pinion now have a good look how does the fork actually fits the pinion it fits that way not that so when you're fitting when you are reassembling everything make sure the forks fits like that at this angle now take the fork out and this is our pinion this is the actual part that we have to replace simply by getting ourselves a 13 socket and hitting the collar back which will make it knock off we have our socket here Pull it over and as you see the color is knocked off and we just have a little safety ring here which we are going to simply remove with the screwdriver just basically slide it off the actual shaft and there you go the safety ring comes off and the circle comes off and the pinion slides out this is the actual part we are going to replace now this this will come off there's a shim inside there stuck to the gear so okay you can always put a bit of a grease there on the on the needle bearing or a bit of a grease on the shaft itself but generally you don't even have to take it apart just pull it back where it should be I'm not going to put the new pinion onto it guys because there's no need um, because there's no really physical way you can actually check the pinion or you'll see any difference in starter running so I'm just going to put the old one back onto it just simply slide it down then you put your collar first the open side see this is the open side this is the closed side the open side up just like that now get your safety ring then Put it there now the easiest way to slide the safety ring over the over the collar there into the channel is just get yourself a screwdriver one side in as you can see put your thumb on the other side and slide the other side in now it's time for the hardest part of the entire task and we're going to change the camera view to show it show you show you a better way of doing it now guys this way it might seem bit brutal but I ensure you that this is actually the handiest way of fitting the circlip back, back over the collar. Now get yourself the shaft in device. Now first thing what you want to do is you want to give a circlip a little squeeze, squeeze it, maybe turn it around, squeeze it again, 
and do it over again on the other side. Now, once you have this done, you'll turn the circlip, the opening that side, shove the collar over it, and put the shaft of the starter in the vise, just like that. Now, make sure you're taking sharp enough angles so you're actually not damaging the surface where the bearing runs, you're just pushing down the edge there. So just simply tie it in, then turn, turn it around on the other side and do the exactly same thing on the other side. Just make sure to take sharp enough angles while you're doing it. And as you see, this hops in and the actual collar, the actual collar is nice and tight onto the shaft. Now guys, once we have the new pinion fitted and the collar tight in place, it's down the hill from here. Put a bit of a grease on this surface here, not too much. Get your fork. Now remember the fork goes like that. Now you might not see much difference between this way and the other way, but if you look closely, look how this edge bends this way and how it bends now. And this is the way you want to fit your fork. So slide your fork over that and fit the lot into the driving of the starter. Now there's a bearing at the bottom, you can put some grease on it or oil, oil, oil preferably. Now we just slide the entire assembly back into its place. As you can see there's little little tits, one here and one here. They'll go in nicely into their slots. See the entire assembly sits down nicely, the forks here, the pinions there. Now next thing to do is we're just going to put the steel plate of our solenoid back there where it should be just on top of the of the slider of the forks now get your rubber grommet slide it over so it will hold down the plate now rubber grommet slide down so it cuts in the actual bracket so it's okay now our three spider gears Slide them down. Our plate goes over the gears. Now guys, now steel ball that comes from the bushing there. Throw it in. Make sure it actually falls on the bottom of the bushing. Now, to keep it in place while you're doing the job, in case you just roll out of it, just put a drop of grease or a drop of oil inside there. So it'll kind of... Uh, make the, 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 the ball stick up to the bottom of the, of the bush in there. Now, get our armature, armature down, fits in. Now, get our body. Now, as you guys can see, here there's a little square slot. This square slot is for the grommet. So the body simply slides the way that the slot is for the grommet. Now, when you're fitting, the actual body on the rotor it's very simple just pull the brushes back with your fingers one by one let it go over the bearing and then pull them back again and let it go over the armature now you can slot the lot into place now the cap the cap is kind of symmetric, it'll go in one place. Now in some of them there's a little shim which kind of goes on top of the bearing there, which sits on the armature, but in general it's it's really useless, it doesn't do anything. Put the cap back onto it, just make sure them two inside holes are lining with the threaded holes, which one of them is here and one of them is here, in the brush box. While you're shoving it down, make sure they are aligned and once it's on, the throughout bolts, as you see, the throughout hole here and the actual thread for the bolt are aligning perfectly. Put your throughout bolts into it, put your two little bolts back into their places. Now guys, once you have your two throughout bolts and two bolts at the back tightened, it's time to fit the solenoid back onto it. 
Now, first of all, get your plunger. Now, shove the pinion out so it's going to be easy to fit the plunger back onto the fork. And as I said, shove it over. And once you have it in place, make sure you can do this. Now, once the plunger is in place and we can see that it pulls in and out the solenoid, the pinion, get yourself the solenoid. Make sure the spring is inside. And how does the solenoid fit? Now, as you can see, one of them two connections have a steel link going from itself onto the solenoid. And other one doesn't. This one. So you want this connection to be connected with the lead from the start. So simply fit it in the way so it's as near to it as possible, which in this case it's down facing the starter. So fit our solenoid. Put one. Tighten them both. Put your link from the starter onto the solenoid itself and tighten this as well. Now guys, once we have all done, we can test our starter. I'll turn it around that way so we can actually see it working. This is our main power source to the top connection of the solenoid there. And then we're just going to feed the power into the small one. And as you can see, our starter is working perfect. Penny comes out, spins away. Now, the key to success while you're doing this is basically to diagnose the problem correctly because often enough people think this that's the problem with this starter is the solenoid that it disengages while it's spinning the engine but it's not true it's just the pinion slipping because as you see as you know from the other videos it kind of slips one way and then it catches other way so there's a general misconception there that it disengages and that the solenoid is the problem but it's not true Now guys, as you have seen, it's a quite quick and simple job to do. It solves a very common problem. The pinion only costs few bob and you might as well do it because this is a very common problem with them starters and it's simple to diagnose it as well. You don't need the starter taken out of the vehicle to, to, to diagnose it. What is the problem? That the pinion is the problem. And from now on, you'll know how to do the job as well. I hope you enjoyed the, the video guys and please stay tuned for more videos to come. Cheers!